Okay, folks, uh, this is uh, part two of our Passport to Advanced Math for our SAT stuff. So uh, this is exponential functions and equations. Okay, so uh, exponential functions and equations, uh, they model situations in which a, a quantity is multiplied by a constant factor for each time period. So they can in increase and decrease uh, with time. Increase was, would be exponential growth, and decrease uh, is exponential decay. So here's exponential growth. So y equals a times 1 plus r to the t. And decay is the same, except it's 1 minus r to the t. Okay, And so y is our new population. a is the initial population. And r is the rate of the growth or the decay. So t is the number of time. Uh, intervals that have elapsed. All right, let's try a couple of these, okay? So in 2007, uh, there were uh, 2,573 computer viruses and other uh, computer uh, security incidences in our district, uh, in our school district. Sorry, tongue twister. Uh, during the next seven years, the number of incidents increased about 92% each year. So we're going to put in 0.92 about how many incidents to the nearest thousands uh, were uh, there in 2014. Okay, so we got to count from how many years from 2007 to 2014. Okay, and then um, uh, let's see, this is a, an exponential growth because it's increasing. Okay, so it's seven years. Well, they told us it was seven years. Okay, and this is our initial, the 2573. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and plug that information in. And when we do that, we get that equation right there. Okay, and so we get uh, 2,573 times 1.92 to the seventh. Okay, so we have to add the parentheses first, and then we'll pick up our calculator and punch in 1.92 to the seventh and do that first and multiply that times afterwards, 2,573. So that's approximately 24, I'm sorry, 247,485, okay? So it says round this to the nearest thousandths right there. So this would round to about 247 thousands, okay? All right, so just make sure you're answering the question. They'll try to trip you up every chance they get, so, so to the nearest thousand, okay? All right, so a researcher estimates that the population of a city is declining, so this is a decay at an annual rate of 8%, or 0.8%, sorry. So, so that's going to be 0 0.008 when we change that to a decimal, okay? So if the current population of the city is at 60,000, which of the following expressions models the population of the city t years from now? Okay, well, since it's decreasing, we're going to do the 1 minus r to the t, and so we're going to plug in 60,000 for a and r for uh, point, uh, uh, 0.008, okay, so that's going to give us choice a. That's this guy right there, so 60,000 goes in for right there, 1 minus 0 0.008, uh, and then to the seventh power right there, so so, uh, not seven, I'm thinking of the last problem. So, to the T power right there and the city after T years. So, choice A, okay? All right, so here we go. Exponential functions and equations, okay? So, here's um, uh, which expression is equivalent to X to the negative 2 over X to the positive 2 plus the square root of uh, X to the third and then times X to the fourth and then minus x. Okay, so what is all of that? Okay, so let's break down each little piece right here, okay? So since uh, x to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over x to the positive 2, so, so this just slides down with this right here. So we have 1 over x squared times x squared, which is x to the 4, 1 over x to the 4th. So this is 1 over x to the 4th. And then we'll put this in a radical, in a uh, exponential position, okay? So the square root of x to the third, okay, if it, there's no number there that's understood to be a 2, and so, so to change this to a, a, a rational exponent, a fractional exponent, it's going to be the inside power over the outside index right there, so x to the 3 halves right there. So this is x to the 3 halves times 4, so we're going to go ahead and add 3 halves plus 4, because remember back in Algebra 1, you guys, x to the 5th is x to the f times x to the 4th is x to the 9th, because we add those exponents, so we're going to go ahead and add these exponents right here, because this is x to the 3 halves times x to the 4, so when we add x to the 3 halves plus 4, there it is right there, they just left it like that, so 
I see choice A as our, as our uh, option right there, okay? So here's 1 over x to the fourth. Here's that other piece, and then minus x right there, okay? All right, so which expression is equivalent to this guy? Okay, so um, uh, remember the square root of x is x to the 1 half power right here. So this is going to be 1 over x to the 1 half power, or x to the negative 1 half power because it's in the denominator so if we put it in the numerator it's x to the negative 1 half so so then we have x to the negative 1 half and here to the nth power powers raised to powers we we multiply those powers right there so that's going to give us uh, choice b okay which solution uh, what is the solution of this okay these ones you got to be careful you solve for x like you normally would we're going to square both sides and then we have to check the answers you guys so when we solve that Here's our equation right here, and then we're going to make this equal to zero right here. Remember, when we uh, square x minus 12, we've got to do x minus 12 times x minus 12. So there it is all foiled out. It gives us that right there. And then when we square the radical, it gets rid of the radical. And then we've got to subtract x and subtract 44 to make it equal to zero. So we get that equation. So now we can um, uh, factor that. Factors of 100, uh, factors of 100 that add to negative 25 or negative 20 times 5. So we get x equals 20 or x equals 5 right there okay now we got to check those answers plug in 20 plug in 5 one of these doesn't check out here we get negative 7 equals positive 7 this uh, so 5 doesn't check out only choice B works 20 okay so there to any way they can trick you they will okay so here's long division okay so so when 6u squared minus u minus 4 is divided by 3u minus 2, the result is this, uh, plus r. So what is r? We need to find the remainder. Okay, so here we go, long division. So we divide 3u three into, three into 6u. So 3u times 2u is going to give us 6u squared. So we multiply 3u times this whole thing, and that's what we write underneath here. So two, I'm sorry, did I say 3u? 2u times 3u is 6u squared. 2u times negative 2 is negative negative for you parentheses subtract okay so when we subtract those cancel u negative u minus a minus four u is negative u plus four uh, u is three u then we slide that four down okay all right and then we do it again then we go three u times one will get us this three u right there and then we multiply one times this and we write it right underneath and then subtract okay and so there's our r right there our r is going to be uh, that negative two this remainder right here okay Okay, so if x is the solution to the equation and x is greater than 0, so we're not the negative answer, if we get a negative answer, what's the value of x? Okay, so multiply everything by the common denominator, x plus 4, x minus 1. So what happens is things cancel, and then we can go ahead and distribute and FOIL. We're going to FOIL out over here, and we get um, uh, this guy right here when we do that. And then combining like terms, now we're going to set it equal to 0. So when we set it equal to 0, we get that. I'm going to divide everything by 4, okay, and then we can factor that, that factors to that, so let me, I'll just slide that up over there. So this gives the solutions, uh, x minus 2 equals 0 gives x equals 2, and then 2x plus 3 equals 0 gives negative 3 halves. Remember, we don't want the negative one, we just want the positive one, so x equals 2, okay? All right, if xy is the solution of the system of the equations below and y is greater than 0, so what is the value of y? Okay, so what we're going to do, solve for y y in that top equation so subtract 3x and then we'll sub that in into right here okay so it's negative 3x plus 3 okay we're going to foil that out get everything on one side make it equal to zero okay and then factor that okay so when we factor we get x equals negative three or, or x equals two remember we want to know what y is okay so we're going to plug in since y equals uh, negative 3x plus 2 we're going to plug in y, so when we plug in x equals negative 3, we get negative, um, uh, negative 9. Uh, actually, we get negative 6, don't we? Negative, oh, negative 3 times negative 3, that's right. Okay, we get negative 9 or 6, sorry, brain freeze right there. Remember, we don't want the negative 1, so it's going to be y equals 6 on that, okay? All right, what, uh, uh, which would have an x-intercept of negative 4 and 5? Okay, well, that, that one's pretty easy. This one is because uh, by the zero product property, if we set this equal to 0 and set this equal to 0, then we get x equals negative 4 out of this one. We get x equals positive 5 out of this one. 
So it's choice A right there, okay? All right, so we just this one will give us positive 4 and negative 5, and then this one, um, uh, we can get the vertex. We can FOIL that out and refactor that, and same with that one right there. So anyway, so it's choice A. So this function uh, is graphed over there, so in the xy plane to the right. If k is a constant, such that the equation f of uh, x equals k has four solutions, which of the following could have a value of k? Okay, whoops, I started the answer right there, you guys. So the graph f of x equals k is y equals k. That's a, if y equals a number, you guys, that's a horizontal line. So, so we need to find out which horizontal line out of these choices, y equals 1, y equals 0, y equals negative 1, y equals negative 2, because it's y equals k, which one of these graphs intersect this graph in four spots? So I enlarged it down here. Here's y equals 1. It intersects it in two spots. We want four spots. Here's y equals 0. It intersects it in three spots. y equals negative 1 is our ticket right there. It intersects that graph in four different spots. y equals negative 2 doesn't intersect it at all. So it's choice uh, choice C. That's the one that works on that, okay? All right, a little bit more. So if uh, g of x equals 2x plus 1 and f of x equals g of x plus 7, what's f of 3? Okay, well, first we've got to find out g of 3. So f of 3 equals um, uh, g of 3 plus 7. And then g of 3 over here we plug in 3. 2 times 3 plus 1 is 7. So f of 3 is going to be g of 3, um, uh, g of 3 plus 7. This should be a, a plus right here. g of 3 uh, uh, equals there's a plus right there, sorry. Anyway, so 7 plus 7 is 14 right there, okay? All right, so if an object uh, of mass m is moving at speed v, the object's kinetic energy is given by that equation. So here, if the mass of the object is halved, okay, so this is going to be half, so this will be 1 half m, and the speed is doubled, so the speed is going to be v, which is now is going to be 2v, so 2v squared, how is the kinetic energy changed? Okay, so if the mass is, is halved, the mass is halved, the new mass is m over 2, so 1 half of m. And the speed is doubled, the new speed is 2v. Okay, so plugging that in, we get that. Okay, so then 1 times m is m, 2 times 2 is 4, so this is m over 4. This is going to be 2 squared is 4, v squared, so this will be 4v squared. That gives us m over 4, 4v squared. The 4 is now cancel, so we get mv squared. So how is this related to this right here? Well, the 1 half is gone, so we multiplied it by 2. So what happens is, is it gets doubled right there. So the, uh, this is double from the, the equation above, so that's uh, choice C. All right, two more, you guys. So solve for m sub 2 in the equation. So we're going to square both sides to get rid of the radical right there. So when we square, now we can cross multiply. And when we cross multiply, we're solving for m sub 2. So now we're going to divide by r sub 1 squared on both sides. And so when we do that, we'll get this answer or this answer, depending on, on how they want uh, to see the answer right there. So any one of these three answers would be would be okay. Okay, last one, you guys. Where is the function uh, maximized? Okay, this is a quadratic equation, and it goes down because this is a negative x squared term. So it opens down. That's why it gives a maximum term right there, okay? And the vertex can be found by finding the, uh, I'm sorry, it's the maximum at the vertex. It's your y-coordinate of the vertex. So we can find the vertex by doing x equals opposite b over 2a. Remember that? So we plug that in. And we get that, and we solve, and sorry, I got company coming in, so the answer is 2,500. So, all right, you guys, I um, uh, hope that makes sense, and, and take care.